This is a quick topic today, but an extremely important topic to clarify. Often, we tend to classify all liver testing as LFTs. However, it is important to distinguish what we are testing and why. The objectives of today's talk is to differentiate the difference between liver enzymes and liver function tests. Broadly, we think about these tests in two main categories, liver injury versus liver failure. In an injury pattern, I think about the analogy of a punch to the liver. The liver is made of hepatocytes, and when hepatocytes are broken down, we might see the release of AST, ALT, or GGT. These would all be increased in the serum. Now when we think about liver failure, we should think about what the liver normally should be doing. What are the functions of the liver? The liver is responsible for the synthesis of many of our clotting factors. And so the depletion of clotting factors might be reflected in an elevated INR. It's also responsible for the synthesis of many proteins. We use decreased albumin as a marker of decreased protein synthesis, but remember this is probably our least specific test. The liver is also responsible for the conjugation and elimination of bilirubin. And so we often look for an elevated total bilirubin and more specifically, an elevated unconjugated or indirect bilirubin. Finally, the liver is responsible for gluconeogenesis and is a source of glycogen. More so seen in later stages of liver failure, hypoglycemia may also be seen. So, if you're wondering whether or not a drug is actually causing any direct harm to the liver, what pattern might you see? Well, you'd probably expect some sort of liver injury. In contrast, if you're thinking about a patient with chronic alcohol use, you might expect both an injury or a failure pattern. More appropriately, we should probably be classifying all of these tests as a part of our liver investigation panel and differentiate in our head whether we're looking for an injury pattern or a pattern of failure.